Hello and welcome back to the Therapy by Craft channel. <sighs> I feel like it's been a while. Yeah. Is that like the obligated sip of coffee thing that happens in podcasts? Everybody does that. Everybody like, hello, hello, and then they take a sip of coffee. I don't know. Anywho, welcome back. My name is Eunice Kim. I am the maker and host behind the Therapy by Craft podcast channel. And here is where I like to talk about all things knitting mostly knitting yeah I was gonna say craft but let's be real it's mostly knitting um I live in Southern California with my toddler daughter and my husband um I kind of am a little bit of a I have a bit of a puppy dog energy so if that's something that's interesting to you if I have not annoyed you in the last 30 seconds or so and you want to stick around uh, then please subscribe and hang tight <laughs> yeah so I have been getting messages from folks saying that like oh Eunice I love your enthusiasm like enthusiasm that's the word that I keep hearing from folks and I am so thankful and I feel like that's really gracious because I am keenly aware you guys of the kind of energy that I put out and I think um, enthusiastic is a very kind way to put it. <laughs> uh, as I alluded to a minute ago, I do think I have a bit of a puppy dog energy. That's what I decided. Um, I have a lot of energy that's very short-lived. <laughs> so I do feel really excited about things. I am your, I can be like your number one hype girl. I will, if I'm excited about something, if I feel really energized and motivated, then I'm like all about it, all in. But it's not very sustainable long term. So I kind of fizzle out kind of quickly. And like a puppy who gets really excited about things and then like has to take a nap, that's me. Um, and I think you'll find in the things that I have to share with you today that that is true. I have just a little bit of finished objects. Well, really, it's like one finished object, but like time two, times two. And a lot of cast-ons. And I won't share all of them because some of them, since the last time I spoke to you guys, I've cast on and then I frogged it off. Like, yeah, I, I feel like I have this antsy something. Like, people call it castonitis, perhaps, but I don't know. The spring energy has made me feel very, I don't know, wanting to cast on things and not being really satisfied with it and then ripping it out and then trying again and ah. Uh, I don't know what's going on with me. But um, I'm here to share all of that with you. And I have a couple of acquisitions. If that's something that's interesting to you, then please stick around towards the end to, you know, check out what it is that I got. Really, it's the Wooly Knit stuff that I got um, since last time. You know, I told you guys I really liked it, so I ordered a lot more. <laughs> well, it's here, and I'm happy to share that with you. But okay, let's get started. Oh, let's start with what I'm wearing. Uh, I am wearing my Bohemian Scrap City cardigan by Joey of, what is her handle? I forget, but I'll, you know, post it. Um, it was a test knit and it is a scrappy, amazing thing. It's super warm and cozy. It knits sleeve in and then you seam the back. But it's really cozy. I think that this is a good knit for inside the house. I don't find myself wearing it out that much. And I think it's because, if you can see, it does this thing where it's almost like a wing. 
of sorts. And so it's hard for me to put a purse over or a backpack over, but it is really nice and cozy. So I like to wear it around the house when it's chilly inside. Um, the whole thing is made from scraps and it's really great. Uh, it is a V-neck. Yeah, I think Joey did a really great job of making it so that you can use whatever weight of yarn and mix it up. Like she has laid out for you if you have like a worsted weight and a lace weight, like how to hold it together so that you get this beautiful marling effect while still maintaining gauge. I will say that I shed some tears during this test <laughs> because I did one sleeve where I was holding one DK strand with two fingering strands and then I started the second sleeve with holding three strands of fingering and my gauge was atrocious. Like from one sleeve to the next it was, yeah it was like I had two different sizes. I, I, was, I was having a hard time maintaining gauge. So my recommendation, even though it is possible to mix and match your weights to maintain gauge, my recommendation would be to stick with a combination that you really like throughout the whole thing. So as I was making this, I think I had um, a real influencer moment. There's a lot of ladies at my local yarn store who I adore and they all made their own. <laughs> and I think it's because they were observing they were witnessing my my test of this and they're like oh my goodness that looks amazing so then like amanda made one she's the owner of buku yarns which is my local yarn store and then there's like three other ladies who made theirs and when amanda asked me eunice do you have any tips for making this garment i told her look joey again does a really great job of giving you a com like combinations of different weights of yarns but I highly highly recommend maybe just holding three strands of fingering or one strand of DK two strands of fingering all the way through and not switching it up because it, I really messed up my gauge and she said okay good to know so she I think held three strands of fingering and it has this like beautiful moral effect I don't know they did a really wonderful job and that is the recommendation I would give to you if you plan on making this, first and foremost, it's so fun, so make it. Um, but also, if you do choose to make it, pick a combination of, of, of yarn weights and then just stick to it throughout. Mm, let's see. Okay, yeah, so anyway, that's what I'm wearing. Um, finished objects. So yeah, I only really have like one it's two versions of the same like thing and they're socks. I made two pairs of socks. Do 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 do. Isn't it cute? Um yeah, this doesn't have a name. <laughs> I was inspired by Jana of Kim and Jana's podcast or uh, like yeah, they're they're they have a channel on YouTube. Jana of Kim and Jana had shared in her their last episode or maybe two episodes ago that she was making long socks and that was her version of two at a time socks and when I think about it it's not a new concept it's basically a sock tube it's been around for a long time you knit like a big old tube and then you cut it so that you can add a cuff or a heel or or a toe or whatever but it's really just a long tube of stockinette that you can then add an afterthought heel to make socks with this long tube. But for whatever reason, when someone, anytime I heard about long tube socks, that was never appealing to me. I never really thought about making it. It didn't really call to me or speak to me. It didn't feel inspiring at all. But when Jana mentioned that it was her version of the two at a time, something went off in my brain. I was like, Oh yeah, you can make a really long tube and it can turn into two socks instead of just one sock. I don't know why I had in my head that if you make a tube sock, you start with a cuff or you start with the toe and then you end with a cuff or a toe and then you do an afterthought heel and you just get that one sock from that one tube. But no, <laughs> that's actually the whole point of tube socks. Like, that's actually what's really beautiful about it is that you can cut it down the middle and have two socks. Anyway, so when Jana mentioned that, I felt really inspired. I dropped everything that I was doing to cast on 
um, a pair for me and a pair for my daughter. I'm kind of turning into a sock knitter, I think, but it's because of the process. I like the idea of using these really unique and special one skein hanks that I have in my stash that's beautiful in color that it can just shine on its own and if I have one hank or one skein of this really beautiful colorway it actually can produce multiple socks and I really that really appeals to me um, it appeals to my um, resourcefulness I guess or I don't know maybe couponers feel the same way where you know you get something out of a really good deal and you're like yes it like that in and of itself gives you a rush of endorphins perhaps that you had really milked a lot. You got a lot of for your value. Or I'm really struggling with this, but I hope you understand what I mean. But yeah, that's why I think I like socks because you can get multiple socks out of one skein. It just feels like more bang for your buck. However, I keep messing up. I have a different kind of second sock syndrome where Instead of having the second sock be something I dread, the second sock always ends up with mistakes. <laughs> I always mess it up somehow. I count it wrong. When I do the, the heel flap and, and, and gusset, I, I miscount or I miscalculate. And I always mess up and I always have to end up frogging parts of my second sock. And then I lose all steam. So kind of going back to the whole puppy dog energy thing, I get really excited and so I have this motivation to keep going once I finish this, the first sock, but then I really fizzle out with any bump in the road. I get super discouraged when I notice that I have a mistake and I think about all the things that I have to do to fix this mistake. It really bums me out and then it goes into the naughty corner and I don't want to touch it. That's my version of the second sock syndrome. So. When I realized that I could do a long tube and that that could be a two at a time sock situation, especially because the afterthought heel really is like a toe, I was like, oh yeah, that is something that maybe I could do without getting discouraged because I know how to make a toe and I'm very confident in making toes. <laughs> and if I could do it with her heel, then great. So anywho, this is mine. This is Samantha's. And one thing I'm really loving about this is that because it was like a variegated type of yarn, it has the self-striping effect that gave me so much joy. It was really pleasant to knit on. I thought it was really neat too that um, for my size, I cast on 64 stitches. And then for the toddler size, I cast on 52. And it's really subtle, the differences in the striping but I just thought it was really beautiful. It's both unique and different. Or well, unique is different. Um, but I don't know, it still has a really great effect to it. So I really liked it a lot. It is, again, I don't know if I mentioned, a uh, Sorella, Sorella Oopsie yarn. Um, I was really struggling to identify the colorway because I was like, I have no idea what this is. But Steph from Yarn Republic uh, commented on a photo I put on my Instagram and she was like, oh, it looks a lot like Jazz in the Park from her uh, Autumn in New York collection. And I think she's right. <laughs> I think that's the most similar. Although I think Jazz in the Park has a little bit more green to it. But maybe this was a um, like a tester colorway. I don't know. But I like it. It's cute. Now, <sighs> the process actually was great. I knit both of these up in 10 days. So I did the long tube for this, and then I did the long tube for this, and then I think it only took about a day to cut into all of this for the cuffs and, 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 and heels and toes and stuff. But it doesn't fit very well. It's too big. I don't know what it is about this heel or maybe the way that I made it. I don't know if my gauge is off, but I've made other socks before having cast on 64 stitches and it fits fine but I don't know why this it's kind of loose Ugh, it's not only is it loose on me but when I did um Sam socks it was big on her too and I don't know if you can tell but it doesn't sit straight right like because it was a tube like this 
and then you add a heel to it, there's a lot of extra fabric here that makes it really loose on my foot. So I'm really bummed because the process of knitting this was the best experience that I've had with sock knitting so far, but the fit was not great. So, bleh. <laughs> I'm so bummed. <sighs> um, I think the like the heel flap and gusset fit is the best for my foot. Yeah, I think that fits my foot the best. I'm really sad. I'm really, really sad. I tried doing two at a time socks before where like the classic two at a time where you have the magic loop and then you have two balls of yarn and you're working two at the same time, but it's separate. And I hated that process too. <laughs> I don't know why I hated it because I normally do socks with magic loop. So theoretically it should be fine for me, right? Because I'm used to doing socks with magic loop but maybe it's like having two balls of yarn at the same time or I don't know but it really wasn't enjoyable for me but the benefit of doing two at a time socks that way is that you can do like the heel flap and gusset so should I try that again I don't know anyway I, I feel like I've talked about this long enough <laughs> Uh, oh, but one more thing that I learned about myself while doing this is I am 100% cuff down sock knitter. I, so when I made this, I started with a cuff, I, I cast on for a cuff, I did the tube all the way down, and then I did the toe at the very bottom. So when I cut into the tube, I had to knit a cuff for one of them and a toe for the other one. And instead of casting on the cuff and then maybe kitchenering the cuff into the part of the tube with the toe, I just picked up the live stitches and worked the cuff only toe up. That meant that I bound off the cuff. And I hated it. <laughs> There's a lot of things I'm hating today. <laughs> Um, but it was so finicky and I didn't like it and I realized I really prefer to cast on with the cuff instead of the other way around. I don't mind Kitchener stitching, I don't mind a sewn bind off, but maybe because the needle size is so small that like all the little things that you need to do to bind off, I was like, this is really hurting my hands. But yeah, so that's the other thing that I learned about myself. So. That means that moving forward, I think I'm just gonna stick with cuff down socks with a heel flap and gusset, which unfortunately means that I can't use Jenna's amazing two at a time tube sock method, but I prefer to have socks that fit my foot well. I have an eight and a half inch circumference, no, 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 like an eight inch circumference, and my feet are kind of like flat and wide, so, yeah, I want them to fit me comfortably. Okay. And on that note, I'm curious, how do you guys style your hand-knit socks? What shoes do you wear them with? <laughs> um, I want to wear them to work, and Samantha needs to wear socks every day to daycare because that's part of the rules. Anyway, so that's fine. But I'm curious, how do you guys style your socks? I like actually wearing hand-knit socks with my Birkenstocks. Yeah, I'm one of those. But I can't wear my Birks to, to work. So I have been figuring out how to, I've been looking up how to style them. And yeah, I wanna know how you guys style them. Like, do you wear them with loafers? Do you wear them with like chunky sneakers? I don't know. And especially going to work. <laughs> how do you style them? Anyway, please leave a comment below so that, you know, I can hear about your styling tips. Okay, so anyway, that was my only finished object since the last time I saw you guys. I think I said everything that needed to be said about those. Um, I still recommend the method because, again, it was a very delightful process, and I enjoyed it from, finish, from start to finish. It just was the fit. Mm. But if you already have, if you've already done Afterthought heels before and it fits your foot great, then yeah, I think this is the way to go. If it fit my foot great, 
then that's the only way that I would have done socks, but back to the drawing board. Okay, next, my whips. So after I finished my Grow With Me blanket, I needed another garter stitch modular blanket. <laughs> I think I always just need to have one of those um, in my hands. Yeah, like in my in my rotation, I think I'm just always going to have to have one. So what I picked up was also um, inspired by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. And it's a jelly roll blanket. Ta-da! It is a pattern by KF Jones, I think. And um, the pattern is inspired by, I don't know if you guys sew, but if you do, if you go to like Joann's or whatever fabric store, then they have these jelly rolls where they have strips of fabric that are linked together. And um, I don't know how wide they are, but they are, it, it helps with quilting. You can cut it up or you can use it for um, uh, binding. Is that what it's called? Like a bias strip? Is that what it's called? I'm not a sewist, so I don't know, but I know that it has many, many uses. <laughs> when I looked up the story behind this pattern, she said that, you know, she looked at a quilt that was using these jelly roll strips, and she thought to herself, I could probably knit a version that's very similar to that. And I thought, great, yes, that's, uh, that's amazing. I, I like blankets that actually mimic quilted stuff, so like it's knit, but it looks like it's a quilt, so like it's inspired by quilting. I like quilting. I like the look of quilts, but I am not a quilter. I've made a couple before, but yeah, I just don't like love it as much as knitting. <laughs> so when I saw this, I thought this is a really great idea. And I'm using DK scraps. The pattern is for fingering weight, but again, I'm just modifying it to use uh, DK scraps. I um, am using... I think a US 6 needle um, and these are actually double pointed needles that I've put stoppers on on the end so that I have like seven inch needles and I'm just knitting back and forth back and forth back and forth and in order to create some kind of cohesiveness I decided that each strip will have like a color theme so my first strip is a blue color theme and I don't know what my next one's gonna be, but what I love about this is you don't need to have a certain yardage for each color. You can do, you can ha use whatever scraps you have and just work until you're done with it. And that's a wonderful way, I think, of using scraps. I know a lot of people are trying to like bust their stash or use from their stash, and again, this is a really great option for that, I think. Uh, I haven't been as diligently working on this, but I do like knowing in the back of my mind that I have it. It grows really quickly because it's like, I think mine's like 18 stitches across. And so, yeah, it just goes, 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 goes. Okay, next is my Maven Top by, I think her name is Rachel Ramo. I don't know how to say her last name. I'm sorry, Rachel, if I'm butchering it. Um... And it is a top-down cir circular yoke tee using fingering weight yarn. I have decided to make this using Kathmandu's fingering. It is a merino silk and cashmere tweed. It's pretty nice. The colorway is oyster shell. Um, I don't know if it's coming out very well, but it is a very nice tweedy, heathered, browny color. It's a very nice neutral. It is one of the few non-superwash offerings that Buku Yarns has, which is again my local yarn store, and I was dying to use it. Ever since it came into the store, I wanted an excuse to use the yarn. It feels like it's going to block beautifully. I don't know how else to describe it. It kind of feels like <laughs> this is very oddly specific, but bear with me. If you ever take a cardboard box and you rip it, 
the seam that is in that cardboard box it has a little like little fibers that come out of it if you feel the side of that cardboard ripped to seam that's what this feels like and I know that sounds weird because you don't want your yarn to feel like cardboard but it feels almost like pulpy um, it feels like it's very um, lofty almost I wonder if the camera will pick up on on how it looks it kind of I don't know it feels really floofy but also not I can tell that there's still some spinning oil on here so when I work with it um, I can I can feel the oil but yeah it's really I don't know I don't know how to describe it it's really unique it's unlike any yarn I've worked with before I think it's gonna bloom really really nicely there's silk and cashmere content in here so even though it feels a little bit stiff and oily as I'm working with it it kind of reminds me of what people have said about the Kinross 4 ply even though I haven't worked with my Kinross yet this I don't know, I just have a feeling. I have a feeling it's gonna work out okay. <laughs> um, I have been wanting to make the Maven top for a really long time. It's been on my queue and when I think Callie or Kaylee from, oh, I just know her name and I know her picture, Needles and something. She posted a picture of her wearing hers and I was sold. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna go for it. So yeah, I, t I cast that on, and it was a bit of an impulsive cast on, but like I said, I just have this cast on energy, and yeah, I wanted to go for it, so I did. I have two more that I want to share with you guys, and both of them are tests. So which one to start with? Oh, I shared this one on my Instagram feed already, so I'll start with this. This is my Helianthus, Helianthus tank. <laughs> that I'm testing for Andrea. Is it gone? I don't know. You guys, when I talk to you, it's literally the first time that I'm saying out loud some of these things I've been reading, like, visually. So I'm butchering everything. <laughs> and, yes, please forgive me. But I'll just call her Andrea G. Because I'm confident in saying that. But it is the Helianthus test, and I've made quite a bit of progress. It's a bottom up. It's a bottom up. It has a little bit of negative ease, and I think this is my first garment that I've made with negative ease, so I'm a little bit excited slash nervous about it. But um, I did a quick try on, and I think it'll be okay. I am able to meet gauge perfectly, so that's very exciting. I am using the knitting for olive cotton merino that i had in stash uh with a us 2.5 needle and it's going by qu quickly actually i'm very surprised maybe it's because it's just straight stockinette and i it's been my like meeting knit or um as i'm reading i can knit i can i've been practicing knitting blind on this garment and it's been great yeah and i noticed too that this is not hurting my wrists as much. I used this before, but I used this held double to make my square neck tee. And I'm trying to remember, did I use wooden needles? Because I do remember it hurting my wrists quite a bit then. Is it because I was holding it double? I don't know. But I'm holding the single stranded on my Knitter's Pride metal needles steel tip like the lace needle tip needles and it's okay and that's super super exciting because i've been saying to you guys oh cotton's been hurting my wrist cotton's been hurting my wrist but maybe i found a hack maybe it's the metal tips maybe it's the metal needles that i need yeah i'm almost done with the body actually i if i went straight to what the pattern says I would be done with the body but I want to wear this to work so I'm lengthening it and Andrea already said that, that was fine is it Andrea side note I feel very strongly about people pronouncing names correctly 
and in the way that the person wants their name to be pronounced. I have a Korean name. My, my legal name is, is my Korean name and people butcher it all the time. So then when I was younger, my mom gave me an English name, which is Eunice, but people still butcher it all the time. They say Eunice or actually that's the other one. But yeah, a lot of them, they say Eunice. And I'm like, no, it's Eunice. And so when I see other people's names, I really, really try very hard to pronounce their names correctly. But sometimes I don't know and I feel so bad. I wish I could just ask her. Maybe I should have just asked her before recording this episode. But anyway, side note, that's a tangent. Uh, yes, so Andrea, Andrea already uh, approved of me to lengthen my tank. So I am. I'm a little nervous because it is bottom up. So once I split for sleeves, I'm pretty much committed to the length of it. But I did some math. This is where the schematic portion of the patterns are really, really helpful. So I went in, I pulled out um, a tank top that I really like, that I do wear to work, and I measured the entire length of it. And then I looked at the schematics to see the difference between the entire garment length and the underarm to bottom hem length. I did some math to calculate how much length there is from the splitting for sleeves to the top, and I subtracted that from the total garment length of my favorite tank and found that if I knit about 11 and a half inches, before splitting for sleeves on this tank, I will get the length that I need. Did you guys follow that? <laughs> that was quite a bit of, um, yes. But 11 and a half inches. I think the pattern for my size calls for eight and a half inches, but I'm gonna add three inches more. Um, I have about two more inches left to go, and then I'll be ready to split for sleeves. And I think it's gonna go by quickly. This isn't due until mid-May. Um, and I started this about two weeks ago. Um, and I haven't even been knitting on this monogamously because as you've seen, I've been a bit all over the place. But yeah, it's working out pretty quickly. I'm really excited about it. I don't think it's gonna take up that much yarn. All of this was about one ball, which is about 50 grams. I'm just now going into my second ball and I'm hopeful that I'll be able to finish the entire garment with two balls of the Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino that would be super exciting because then I can make so many more. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. Okay. And then my last work in progress is another test, but this time it's for Sarah Opie. And it is my resource raglan. Oi. Da 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 da. I just split for sleeves. I have maybe like an inch, maybe an inch um, of the body done. But I am liking it. This is knit with Knitting for Olive Merino in the Dusty Rose colorway. Um, it's one of the acquisitions that I shared a while back and I am pleasantly surprised by the yarn. Okay, confession time. When I initially bought the Knitting for Olive yarns, so I only have the Cotton Merino and the Merino in stash, but when I initially received it, I was not very impressed. I know a lot of people love it, and that's why I kept buying it, because I thought, look, maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's a reason. Also, I wanted to support the fundraiser for Ukraine, so, you know, I knew I would have some kind of use for it, so I, I went ahead and bought it. But when I touched it, I was like, really? It's not that great. Why do people love this so much? But now I get it. <laughs> Worked up, it feels amazing. In a ball, not so much. But as I'm working with this merino, it's so soft. <laughs> it's almost softening as I work with it. So if any of you guys have the Knitting for Olive Merino in your stash and you 
similar, you know, you had similar sentiments to it as you pulled it out of the, of the bag and thought to yourself, gosh, this is not as soft as I hoped it would be. I highly recommend putting them on your needles and working up a swatch, blocking it and seeing what you think of it then. Because it is such a pleasure <laughs> to work on this merino yarn. It's soft and it's, I don't know. The other thing though I have to probably mention is that I'm working this in a pretty loose gauge. So it is a fingering weight yarn, but I'm using size five needles to achieve this fabric. This is, yeah, so four millimeter. Oh no, I'm using a US six. This is a four millimeter um, needles that I'm using for this fabric and it's really nice. I wanted to do that because I know the wool would be a little warmer, but I still want to wear it in the spring. So um, I figured if I do it in a looser gauge, then it'll be okay. It'll be cool enough and warm enough. There'll be enough, you know, ventilation or circulation of air um, with the fabric that it'll be comfortable to wear. And even though I live in Southern California where it's warm most of the time, I do work at an office where it's cold and there's no happy medium for the AC. Like, yeah, when the air is on, it gets really cold, even though outside it's maybe like 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So I do think that these transitional pieces for spring is something I can wear all year round because the office is still cold, even if it's hot outside. So this is one that I'm going to be making with like a, I'm deciding, I'm trying to decide whether it's going to be elbow length or maybe three quarter length sleeves um, because I really think I could wear this at the office. Now, that's the yarn, the pattern. Guys, Sarah has completely outdone herself. What she has created is in fact a resource for all knitters who are interested in making a top down or a raglan top. Once you guys start seeing these tester photos come out, you'll start to realize, holy cow, there are so many tops that I can make with this thing that Sarah's gonna be releasing. And I say thing instead of pattern because it really is like a book, you guys. <laughs> she has so many modifications. She has it all written down for four different gauges. I think it's like uh, 24 inches and then 22 inches and then 20 inches and then 18 inch. Let me back up. Let's say that again. 24 stitches per four inches, 22 stitches, 20 stitches, 18 stitches. So it's all the way from fingering, sport, DK, and worsted. She gives instructions for all of it. And uh, the only similarity between all of the variations that she provides is that most of it is in stockinette all the way down. It's raglan, so top down. And that's about it. Everything else you can customize. So most of the pattern or the standard pattern is written for a crew neck, but I decided to do her v-neck modification and what's really cool about it is that the I-cord is done as you go. So I don't have to go back and pick up stitches to do the I-cord for the V-neck, which is freaking amazing, but that's its own thing on the side. I've already seen testers post pictures of their raglans and it's to the point where I can't believe that we're all testing the same thing because they all look so different, but it's all from the same instructions. So, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but be on the lookout. Be on the freaking lookout because it's amazing. And, and I think what I was telling Sarah, and I know a lot of us testers feel the same way, is girl, please, please, please make sure that you're not selling yourself short because this is a freaking amazing resource that she's putting out into the world. It is evident how much she's busted her butt to get this together for, for the knitting community. And I really wish that it would just be published as a book because it really is like a book. <laughs> so I cannot do justice to what she's created. This does not do justice to what she's created. It's just a minuscule fraction 
of what you're able to do with this thing that she's created. So anyway, this is my version of the resource Racklin. And it is a v-neck modification. It's a simple Raglan. I actually don't think I did it correctly, but I did it consistently so it looks right. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to look like that, but whatever. And um, I'm really, really excited to finish this. I really am excited for the designer. I, She's the one who created the um, alley sweatshirt, like the alley pullover and the alley tee it's beautiful so this girl knows what she's doing so be excited you guys I, I will let you guys know when that pattern slash book is released so that you can get your hands on it and I can talk a bit more about it when it's done but yeah anywho okie dokie that is my last work in progress that I want to share there's other things that I have on my needles but I think some of them I'm just gonna rip out and other things I have just put and hibernation but let's talk about acquisitions if this is something that you're interested in please stick around but if not if you're just not really you're like ugh, this is gonna make me feel bad about my own stash oh my gosh you don't have to stay for this part thank you so much for being here up until this point and I will see you guys in the next one for those of you guys who do want to stick around <laughs>I do want to mention is that my husband has done it he's finally done it he has asked me for a garment he has initiated and requested a garment I was really excited about that so I think it was my very first episode I mentioned that I made a zipper sweater a zipper light for my daughter and that my husband upon seeing the zipper sweater on my daughter pulled out his phone to take some photos and exclaimed, oh my gosh, this is the best thing that you've ever made for her and for anybody in our family. And then he requested like maybe a couple weeks ago, so can you make me one? I was like, oh my gosh, you want me to make you one? He was like, yeah, can you make me one just like that? <laughs> I was like, are you sure? With the speckles and everything? He was like, I don't care. I really like it a lot. I really want one. And I thought that was really cute. Um, I've made him a sweater before, so I asked him about that. I've made you a sweater before, you don't really wear it. Are you sure you're going to wear this if I make this for you? And he was like, well, I don't know. I think the other sweater, blah, 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 blah. He had like th things to say about it. And I'm like, okay, well, look, I'll make this sweater for you. It won't be a surprise because the other one, I had him pick out the yarn, but I picked the pattern and I didn't have him try it on as we went. So I said, okay. You can pick the yarn, you can pick the pattern, and I'll make sure that we do some fit tests along the way. He said, okay, that's a good idea. So I looked around, gave him some options. I think he was a bit overwhelmed by the options, so I narrowed it down, and what he chose is the Cascade 220 Superwash yarn in Aspen Heather. And it's a really beautiful um, neutral it's like a cooler uh, well it's kind of cool but also kind of warm I don't know I know nothing about color theory so I'm just kind of making it up right now but it is slightly heathered with gray um, and it's a really beautiful color and I think it's gonna match his complexion very nicely I laughed a bit because um, it is very similar in color to the base of what my daughter's zipper sweater is so I actually think they're gonna match <laughs> and I'm really kind of excited about it because I think it's gonna be super cute we don't have that many cold days left though so I told him hey I will s work on it slowly but just so you know you're not gonna be able to wear it until later this year and he said that's fine just make it for me and then I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to wear it when it gets cooler maybe like in autumn I'm like okay all right so I'm finally going to make something for my husband that I think we'll be able to get use out of. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. Yeah, so if I haven't said already, it's the Zipper Light. There's a men's version, an adult's version, the Zipper Light sweater. So that's what this is going to become. It's going to be good. And then my only other acquisition are my Wooly Knit cones. <laughs> I can't wait to show you what colors I got! So I did get two 
of this colorway. It's more neutral, but it's um it's like a light oatmeal -y color. But what is the name of this? Oh, there's no way I'm gonna be able to say this correctly. Mullison? <laughs> Mulhasen? <laughs> it's also so American saying that. Um, but I'll spell it out. Um and I got two cones of this because it's just a beautiful neutral. Yeah. And um, as I'm working on my Farnham sweater, oh, actually I haven't touched my Farnham sweater um, since the last time I showed you guys, but because it feels so nice, I have no doubt I'm gonna be able to get some good use out of this. Since it is a fingering weight or light fingering weight, I also feel comfortable making more tanks from this. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe more resource tees, maybe more of these tanks, I don't know, but I really like the color. And these are the other two colors that I got. Yay, it's so pretty. Mm, this one is the Citri Citron, <laughs> Citron color. There's an OE in there. Um, and I don't know if that's supposed to be, I don't know, but it is a, like a yellow, it's almost coming out green in the camera, and it's not green. If I compare it to my pea pod color, this is definitely more green than this. But for whatever reason, this is coming up like a lime. And it's more yellow than that. Okay, it's not doing it justice, whatever. And then the other one is... Pinot Green, which is um, a deep foresty green. And yeah, I think this is actually coming up true to the color. Let me take this off. Ooh, I wonder if that'll help with this, with this yellow if I take it off. Nope. <laughs> nope. But I, um, I love these colors together. And when I got it in the mail, I thought, oh, this would make a really nice color work sweater if this was the, uh, the main color with these two um, contrast colors. I think it would look really nice. So, yeah, I'm very excited about my new woolen, woolly knit cones. I um, feel very satisfied about having these like fingering weight, non-superwash yarns that are wearable next to skin. Yeah, I just feel really confident about working with it. This is the um, the British wool that I uh, showed you guys earlier. And this one is not the Merino. This one is the actual woolly, like the British wool. And it is a little bit more rustic and scratchy, but it's still, it's still nice, I'm realizing. So I'm excited to work with this too. I am tempted to make a pair of socks with this. I don't know why I want a, a pair of socks in this green. Um, it's pretty rustic. So I feel like if it's on my feet, it won't be that big of a deal. Like it's not gonna feel as scratchy to me. Um, like I said, the office is a bit cold, so maybe it'll be okay. But also if my feet get sweaty, is it gonna felt it? I don't know, is that kind of gross? <laughs> Sorry. Anywho. So that's it, actually. Those are my acquisitions. Uh, but before I let you guys go, I asked last episode about Henley shirts or Henley tees for kids, and I found one. So I wanted to share it with you. It is actually designed by Sari Nordland. It's not on Ravelry as a pattern, but it is free and it's on a website. I forget what the website is, but it's printable. It is called the Summer Child Knitted Top and it is so freaking cute. It has these adorable Pico edges. It has a folded down hem with these Pico edges and it has a little Henley detail and I think it's going to be perfect. I'm so excited to knit that up. I don't know what yarn I'm going to use quite yet, 
the uh, pattern photos show like a baby pink version of it. It almost looks like my Dusty Rose, so I'm wondering if maybe I'll use the Dusty Rose instead. But um, I do know that she gets really warm, like she, she heats up pretty quickly, so I might use um, the Cotton Merino instead. But I, I'm, I was like, very happy to discover that and I needed to share it with you guys in case you guys have kiddos that you want to knit for and as the summer or as, as the warmer days are coming if that's something that you want to make for your little ones yes there you go <laughs> you can knit that with me um, whenever it is that I decide to cast that on which might be soon because who knows I've been on this like casting on binge so who knows uh, but yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you so much for being here again. If this kind of content is interesting to you and enjoyable for you, if you don't mind me sitting with you and keeping you company as you knit or do whatever it is that you're doing, then yeah, give this video a like. Please comment below. I actually have been really, really enjoying the comments that you guys have been leaving. Thank you again for being here. I hope you get to have some moments of peace and you get some moments of experiencing joy in your day today. And until next time, have a good one.